Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp, week six, video two. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, before we begin, a quick word of warning. Uh, we are not going to talk about any of the statistics or how to run statistics or about the basics of hypothesis testing in this video. If you have not had a basic uh, Biostats 101 class, please be careful and don't just run the things that I'm showing you on screen right now. Uh, these things that I'm showing on screen are for those people that already know how to use these techniques and are looking for a way to apply them within SAS. If you don't know how to use these techniques, I would recommend you learn before you come back to apply them using the syntax that I'm showing on screen right now. Okay, with that disclaimer, let's jump straight into it. Uh, for today's uh, hypothesis testing video, we are going to cover how to do a chi-square test, which tests uh, for a categorical variable across two groups. Then we are going to talk about an independent samples t-test, an ANOVA, and then a simple linear regression model. Let's begin with the chi-square test. To do a chi-square test within SAS, you have to run the PROC freak that we showed you earlier. You have to run across tabs using the PROC freak and simply add the option with the forward slash CHISQ. And CHISQ will basically generate the chi-square by uh, automatically, if you will. Let me go ahead and run that. I've listed I've listed two variables in here in my chi-square. Um, really, what variables I'm running the chi-square test on is not important. I'm just trying to demonstrate this for the purpose of um, this video. So you can see here, now the proc free generates the output that it usually will generate, which includes uh, the breakdown of M status by adjacent M status, along with numbers, total percentage, column percentage, uh, row percentage, and then it will add a statistics table at the bottom which actually generates uh, p-values. And this p-value here is the p-value that you are usually interested in. Another interesting thing about the proc freak is that if you run a chi-square, it will automatically generate a Fisher's exact test as long as it observes that any one cell within this uh, cross tab is five or less, which in this case, Fisher's exact test got generated because in here there is a number five. Um, if you explicitly want the Fisher's exact test to be generated, you just have to use the Fisher option in Proc Freak in order to get there. Uh, but if your small sample sizes are small, the Fisher's exact test is automatically conducted by SAS. Uh, next, if you want to run an independent samples t-test, uh, the syntax for running that is actually the exact same as a Proc means for calculating the means for two groups. So if you wanted to run uh, the means for the opioid mortality variable, for M status, where M status is zero and M status is one, if you wanted to calculate two means, you would write the same exact code, except you would replace the word t-test with means. So if you replace means with t-test, uh, it not only runs the independent sample student t-test, it actually also gives you the descriptors of the means and standard deviations itself. Uh, so I have found that running the proc t-test is a lot easier than running proc means. And as you can see, um, it first generates this table, which gives you the M status variable. Um, so it tells you when M status is zero, what is the mean of the variable? When M status is one, what is the mean of the variable? And it gives you standard deviations. Uh, it runs the equality of variances test, which I've found to be really useful because you can use this p-value to determine if you are interested in the pooled p-value uh, or the satirth weight test, for example. Uh, and it gives you graphical representations of the distribution of opioid mortality variable when M status is zero and when M status is one. When M status is zero and one, yeah, right here. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about these statistics because again, this is not a statistics video. Uh, one thing to notice is that if you want to run a dependent sample status or a paired status, this is not the syntax. You'll have to use the paired statement instead of the class statement if you want to do that. Uh, I'm not showing that on this video, but if you go to SAS help, you will find that it really is not that difficult to run. Uh, next, I want to demonstrate PROC ANOVA. Uh, if you want to run an ANOVA, the, the code for running that is actually very simple. Uh, again, very similar to the PROC T test, except you are now beginning to use the model option. The model statement is actually very, very commonly used in SAS and almost every regression procedure, every generalized linear model will use that model statement. And it also is present in the PROC ANOVA. Within PROC ANOVA, 
uh, you have to list all the categorical independent variables that you are interested in within the class statement, right? And then your model statement actually tells you what and what to run. So in the model statement, the syntax is dependent variable equals independent variables. So you list your one dependent variable on the left side of the of the equal symbol, and on the right side, you just list your independent variable. Uh, in Proc ANOVA, you usually just just have one independent variable, so you can list that right here. Um, here is the default output of the Proc ANOVA procedure. It will tell you number of observations that were used and read, um, and then it breaks down the mean sum sum uh, sum of square, the f value. And then it actually also gives you a box and whisker plot. Uh, later in this week, we will learn how to generate this box and whisker plot without actually running a proc three, uh, proc or no wife. That's what you wanted. All right. The last thing that I'm going to demonstrate today is the linear regression procedure. Uh, keep in mind, I'm doing a very simple, basic example of linear uh, regression. Uh, SAS can actually handle some really complicated regression models, uh, but we are not going to go into all of those today. Uh, even within linear regression. I'm only showing the basic option. Uh, there are so many options that you can talk on to proc reg. Um, we are not going to cover all of those in this video because this is again not a statistics video. Uh, the one thing I will note is, is that in proc reg, uh, the syntax for a basic regression is very simple. But if you want to add and do more things and really use up that functionality within SAS, you will find that proc reg is not actually the best way to run regression. You're probably better off using proc GLM or proc GenMod, for example, uh, to run a proc to run a generalized uh, linear model, for example. Um, the syntax for proc reg is very simple. You write proc reg, you list the data in the data equals option, and then you write your model statement. In your model statement, you list the dependent variable on the left, followed by the equal symbol, and then you just list all the independent variables that you want to feed into your model. Um, and you can list as many as you want here and the regression should run, provided of course you are meeting all the usual statistical requirements that you need to run for any regression model. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind if you are running proc reg to do your linear regression is that proc reg does not actually support categorical variables. So if you have any categorical variables that have more than two categories, it is up to you to dummy code them and use those dummy variables in your uh, model statement in proc reg instead of the multi-category variable in here directly. In this case, I am running an example, excuse me, I'm running an example where we are predicting opioid mortality rate, so the number of people dying for every 10,000 individuals in that state, based on marijuana status, alcohol use prevalence, and PMP status. Um, let me run this one more time. Here's a standard regression output. You'll see it gives you the analysis of variance table. Uh, it will give you the parameter estimates, including a p-value. So this is your parameter estimate. That's your p-value. It also gives you fit diagnostics by default. Um, and again, if you have categorical variables, please make sure that you convert them into dummy variables before you run proc, uh, proc reg. That covers hypothesis testing. So I'm going to wrap up this video. We're going to pick up on the next one where we talk about how to use plots with incest.